In this video, we're going to try and create the tablet stand that you're creating in lessons. So we're going to do it trying to mimic the materials as well that you're using in lessons so that it will help you recognise the dimensions and hopefully the manufacturing methods as well. So if we go ahead and start with create and a new document, call it something logical so it's always easier to return to. So we're going to go for a tablet stand and click OK. As always, this is going to open up your three planes. For this one, it, it can become quite a tricky make, this one. So you'll, you're going to want to need, uh, going to want to use a, a mouse. And it just means that you've got right click to rotate it round. You can scroll to zoom in and out and then left click to select. It will make it a lot easier for you in the long run. So we're going to start by drawing the trapezium shape that starts to form the main part of the base. So I'm going to click on the top view make it view from the top as well so it's square on by clicking that cube in the top corner and we'll start a new sketch and i'm going to reference all of this from that center point here so you're going to draw a rectangle and i'm not going to worry about the dimensions just yet okay so right on there i've just drawn a rectangle and it doesn't matter about the size we can now dimension that that's why i wasn't worried about the size before so the timber that we're using is 35 millimeters wide so I have to put in the mm because I haven't changed the dimensions yet in this one and the width here needs to be 50 millimeters and I can press enter so that's roughly the shape we start with we're then going to draw two more lines to create the angles of the trapezium so when I'm drawing that I'm starting where it's snapping to that corner and snapping to the top there as well now when I go to dimension I can measure the angle between those two lines and I want that to be 20 millimeters it's going to be the same on this side at 20 millimeters so that's created that trapezium shape that I was after and I can click tick now on there okay that trapezium is done I can extrude it and the thickness is going to be 15 millimeters and I click a tick there okay so you can see that's the wooden shape that we were after so so far relatively straightforward we're now going to create the sides that stick out I could have created these on the same view but we're trying to create it in separate parts so you understand the parts that you need to actually make it as well we're going to click on the side here we're going to sketch and we're going to draw a rectangle on that side snap to the corner and draw it out there and you can see it's snapping to the width that I need as well so the only dimension I need to change is this one okay it's snapping to an angle there I don't want that let's try again dimension of this line here and I want that to be a hundred and twenty millimeters so I can stop typing in millimeters every time I'm going to tick that just to finish and we go to the three lines at the top here workspace units and change that to millimeters and click tick that'll just save me doing that job every single time I'm going to extrude the rectangle that I've just drawn so I'm going to select sketch 2 and we know that the width of the timber is 35 millimeters so that one's done on there so we've got that part we'll do the same on the other side now so we're going to click sketch on this surface here we're going to draw a rectangle snap into the corner and you can see where we're getting that orange and blue dyed line to say it's snapped to that thickness as well and we can dimension this here at 120 and don't need to put in the millimeters this time tick extrude i want sketch three extruding this time at 35 millimeters and click tick okay so that's the base part of the adjustable stand done so far i'm hoping so straightforward so now let's start with the part that's going to allow you to attach an upstand and allow it to all move slightly as well. So we're going to click on the top surface of our base and start our new sketch on there. I'm going to draw a rectangle and I don't want it to snap to anything because I don't want it to limit what I can do at the moment. So the width of this, we're just going to make that 25. It's changed again. There we go. Let's just go back to a dimension click down it doesn't like me at the moment does it let's try that one more time i'm just going to drag it all the way out so it doesn't click on anything else 25 millimeters that side's already done so i can measure between these two and measure that way this is going to fit 
a 35 millimeter wide piece of wood in. It's going to be made out of three millimeter acrylic. So what I'm going to do is add the 35 with the two thicknesses on either side, and that's giving me 41 millimeters, and I can press enter. I just want to make sure that's even from both sides now. So 41, if we imagine this was 50 before, so we need it to be four and a half from this corner to this corner. So I'm just going to click on both of those and I'm going to type in four and a half to make sure it's in the center. 25, this was 35, so that's giving me a distance of five to make sure that's in the center there as well. So I'm just going to make sure that's five. So you can see that's now in the middle doing what we wanted it to. So I can finish that sketch, extrude it. We know that the thickness is three millimeters and we can click tick. Okay, on the top of this again, in fact, I have made a mistake in that last part, so I'm going to right click on the extrude, I'm going to go to edit, and I need it to be a new part, because it's a separate part that we're attaching to the wooden base. I can click tick. Now, clicking on the top surface, sketch, we're going to create two rectangles, from this corner here, and from this corner here. So on the ends, they're going to be three millimeters wide. There we go, fun and games again on the dimension tool. So you can click off there, three millimeters, press enter. Same on this side, drag it out of the way, three millimeters, press enter. Okay, click tick, we're going to extrude, sketch five. I want both of them going up, and 25 millimeters will be absolutely fine on this. Um, we we'll click tick. So we're going to round these corners now, we're going to add the fillets onto them to make it look as if it's a nice round part. So we can do all four at the same time just by clicking on the edges. And we're going to change the dimension here to 12.5 just because that's half of 25 and that should meet nicely in the middle. Click tick. So that's our bent piece of acrylic. To be able to attach that in, we also need some holes going through this. So I'm going to click on the side here, we're going to create a sketch. Draw a circle on that surface. Not quite sure what that's snapped to there, so I'm going to cancel, I'm going to escape the circle, and I'm going to draw it again. I don't want it to snap to anything, because I want to be able to just determine myself exactly where it's going. So I want it in the middle. So that's going to be 12.5, and I want that to be 15 from the base. Okay, so I know exactly where it is. If I have a problem with it, I can go and move it later on. In fact, I'm going to make that dimension slightly bigger to, eight, to 18 to account for that three millimeter thick base. Click tick. Okay, we've got the circle. Now let's remove that from both parts. So extrude, click on the circle, and we want to change the top here to remove. Where it says blind, I'm going to go to through all and click tick. So that's created a nice hole that's going through, and I'll put a nut and a bolt through there to attach my final pieces. The next piece then that's going on is going to click on this side. That's where I want to create the sketch, and I'm going to draw my rectangle vertically. So I'm going to draw that going up this way. Don't worry about the dimensions straight away, but we can see that that's going to be the upstand in a moment. So if I get that into the center, so to move it around the screen like that, I've, cl I've clicked down on the middle click of my mouse button and I can move it around the screen. Okay, so now that's on there, I can dimension everything. So let's make this maybe 150. I can always come back and change it. That's the beauty of using CAD. These changes are very, very easy to make. And we know the thickness of this, if it wants to let me do that this time. So dimension again at the bottom, off to the bottom there, 15 millimeters there. Okay, now let's try and position this so that it's on the center of here. This is 15 mil and that is 25. So the distance from this edge to this edge is gonna be five millimeters. Okay, the distance from this edge to here, if I try and distance that, it's always gonna be below it. So I'm actually gonna use my dimension tool to distance the top from there. So if I make it 150, it's going to be touching the bottom. I want it slightly off, so I'm going to make that 155 and press on the tick there. Okay. So at the moment is my tablet stand in a nutshell. I've got the base, I've got the attachment for the vertical, and I'm just in the middle of the vertical post there. I could, I've got options, I could curve these edges now on the drawing on the sketch 
or I could fill it them after. And because I'm more used to fill it in, I'm going to pick that method. But you can pick whatever you're most comfortable with. So I'm going to click on, on um, the tick on a sketch. I'm going to extrude that sketch 7, and I want it to be a new part. The distance is the width of the timber we're using, which is 35, and we can click tick. So we've got that part extruded through. Okay, using your fillet tool, I'm going to click on this edge, rotate it around and click on this edge. Thickness was 15, so I want this to be half of the thickness that meets in the middle, makes a nice round, and that is looking just as I want it to at the moment. The top edges also need filleting, so if I right click and edit on the fillet, I can select more edges to add in. So we can do that on there as well. So you can see we've got the three parts. The only thing that's missing from this now are the holes for it to all line up with. So if I click on this surface, click sketch, I can draw my circle. If I look at it from the right, it'll make it easier for me. I should be able to snap to the existing circle that's already there, add a quick dimension to it, which is struggling to remember the other circle now. So let's go for 7.5 which is way too big, it needs to be 4, 7.5 will work, that will, we can make that work, okay, let's click tick on there, we're going to extrude sketch 8, we want that to be a remove and change a blind to through all again, and on here we should be able to see that hole going through, at the moment it's not sure which part it's trying to remove the material from. So that's where this says Merge Scope. So on Merge Scope, if we click on that first, we can select Part 3, which is the vertical. It now knows that that's the bit I'm on about. Click Tick to finish. We should have a hole going straight through that we can add our nut and a bolt later on. Okay, at the top here as well, we also need to add a hole. So click on Sketch again on that surface. We can draw the hole, look at it from the right to make it easy. We can draw the hole in here and dimension it so it's in the center of the piece. 7.5 from the edge. We can make the diameter 7.5 as well. And then distance from the top here, we can make 10. So all easy numbers to remember, hopefully. So we've got that circle drawn, extrude now, remove, and we want to go through all, tell it which circle we're on about. And you can see it's already picked up. We're using part three for that. So we're happy so far with our work.